Hello students, in the last two sessions, we have learned regarding the types of reproduction, structure of flower, structure of anther, structure of pollen grain and development of male gametophyte from chapter number one, reproduction in lower and higher plants. In this session, we are going to learn three topics. First one is structure of ovule. Second one is development of female gametophyte. And the third topic is types of pollination. You know that gynosium is the female reproductive hole of the flower. Gynosium is also called as pistil. The members of gynosium are called carpels. Carpels are also called as megasporophylls. In some flowers, carpels are free. Such flowers are called as apocarpus flower. Example, mycelia. In some flowers, carpels are united and such flower is called as syncarpus. Example, brinjal. In the diagram, we see the structure of carpel. Carpel is differentiated into three main parts. These are stigma, style and ovary. Inside the ovary, one to many ovules are present. After fertilization, ovary develops into fruit while ovule develops into seed. In the flower of some plant, ovary show presence of a single ovule. Such ovary is called as uniovulate. Example, wheat and mango. In some plants, the flowers show presence of many ovules inside the ovary. Such ovary is called as multi-ovulate. Examples are brinjal and tomato. You all know that ovules are present inside the ovary. Generally, most of the angiosperm show presence of anatropous ovule. Now we will see the structure of anatropous ovule. Anatropous ovule is a ovule in which the axis is bent or it is also called as inverted ovule. In the given diagram, we can see the vertical section of anatropous ovule in angiosperm. Now the stalk of the ovule is called as funicle. By the help of this funicle, the ovule is attached to the placenta of the ovary. Then the point of attachment between the body of ovule and funicle is called as hilum. Similarly, the ovule shows two protective coverings. These are called as integument. In angiosperm, there are two integuments that is outer integument and inner integument. As integuments are two, the ovule is also called as bitegmic. Then these integument leave a small opening at the apex. It is called as micropyle. The micropyle is the place from where the pollen tube enters inside the ovule during the process of fertilization. Then major part of the body of ovule consists of nucellus. Nucellus is generally made up of diploid parenchymatous tissue which constitute or forms the body of ovule. The base of the ovule from where the integuments are produced is called as 
cell is up. And inside the new cell, is a seven cell and eight nucleated structure called as female gametophyte is present. Female gametophyte shows total seven cells. Now at the chalazal end, we see three cells. These three cells are called as antipodals. Then at the center of the embryo sac, a diploid cell is present. It is called as secondary nucleus and it contains two nuclei. Then at the micropylar end, a group of three cells called as an egg apparatus is present. Egg apparatus consists of central egg cell or it is also called as female gamete and two lateral synergids which are shown in the diagram in a red color. These lateral synergids are present on both the sides of the egg. These synergids consist of filiform apparatus. This filiform apparatus help the pollen tube to reach up to the egg cell. So in this way, we have seen the structure of anatropous ovule in angiosperm. The development of female gametophyte in angiosperm occurs by the process of megasporogenesis. Megasporogenesis is a process in which diploid megaspore mother cell produces haploid megaspores and from one of the megaspores embryo sac or female gametophyte of angiosperm is developed. One of the cells of nucellus develops into diploid megaspore mother cell. This diploid megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce linear tetrad of haploid megaspores. The megaspores are arranged in a single row hence it is called as linear tetrad out of the four megaspore the megaspore which is at the base becomes functional while upper tree degenerate the functional megaspore obtains nutrients from the new cellars for its further development the nucleus of functional megaspore undergoes three successive nuclear division or mitosis. In first mitotic division, the single nucleus of functional megaspore undergoes mitosis to produce two nuclei. From these two nuclei, each nuclei or each nucleus migrate to each pole. Then the second mitotic division occurs inside the functional megaspore. In second mitotic division, from a single nucleus, two nuclei are produced at each pole. So in all, total four nuclei are produced by mitosis second. Later on, the third mitotic division occurs and from two nuclei, in all, four nuclei are produced at each pole. From these four nuclei, one from each pole come to the center to produce a cell called as diploid secondary nucleus. Diploid secondary nucleus is also called as definitive nucleus. The three cells called antipodals are produced from the three nuclei present at the chalazal end. Then the nuclei present at the micropylar end produce a group of three cells 
it is called as an egg apparatus egg apparatus consists of egg cell at the center egg cell is also called as female gamete and two lateral synergies are produced so a mature embryo sac is seven celled and eight nucleated structure that means three cells are present at the chalazal end then one cell is present at the center with two nuclei and three cells are present at the micropylar end so in all there are total seven cells and eight nuclei this seven celled and eight nucleated structure of embryo sac is called as female gametophyte of angiosperm this development of embryo sac from a single megaspore is called as monosporic development monosporic development means the development of embryo sac occurs from a single megaspore as the embryo sac develops within or inside the megaspore it is called as endosporic after the maturity of female gametophyte the process of fertilization occur inside the embryo sac now we will learn about the process of pollination pollination is a process in which pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma of the flower as pollen grains are non motile and female gametes are produced at different place to bring male and female gametes together pollination is necessary then to transfer pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flower pollinating agents are required depending upon the mode of transfer of pollen grains pollination is of three types the first type is autogamy autos means self which occurs within the same flower hence it is also called as self pollination then second type is gitanogamy giton means neighbor the pollination which occurs between two flowers present on the same plant is called as gitanogamy and the third one is xenogamy or it is also called as cross pollination in this type of pollination the flowers are present on two different plants the first type of pollination is autogamy autogamy means the pollination which occurs in the same flower that is the pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma in the same flower hence it is called as autogamy the offsprings produced due to autogamy are genetically similar to their parents the common example of autogamy is pea plant then second type of pollination is called as gitanogamy gitanogamy is a type of pollination in which there is transfer of pollen grain from anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower present on the same plant and for the process of this type of pollination pollinating agents are also required the common example of gitanogamy is cucurbita maxima the third type of pollination is xenogamy xenogamy is also called as cross pollination the process of pollination in which the pollen grains of one flower are deposited on the stigma of a flower of another plant belonging to the same species is called cross pollination in cross pollination genetically dissimilar or different offsprings are produced so cross pollination helps to produce new improved varieties of different crops as well as 
different horticultural crops. The common example of cross pollination is maize and jowar. In the given diagram, we see the process of cross pollination. There are shown two flowers. So, in the first flower, we see that the pollen grains get attached to the parts of the insect, and the insect, when visits another flower present on another plant, these pollen grains are deposited on the surface of the stigma of this flower. So, it is called as cross pollination. 